If you're looking for a lens that can cover you for nearly every situation out there, for photo and for video, this is probably it. With some caveats, which we're going to talk about today. Let's chat about the 35 to 150 from Tamron. I know when you click on these videos, you just want to see a bunch of photo and video examples, and I have a ton to show you, and I'm going to scatter it throughout today's video while I'm talking. And then you don't have to just stare at me the whole time as well, which I'm sure you will appreciate. So the 35 to 150, what can it be used for? Let's actually flip that around. I think it's probably easy to say what this couldn't be used for. Now, I did a video last week, which I'll link up here for you, which talks about maybe what this isn't good for and how you can get around that. Because you can shoot nearly anything with this. If you didn't have a 7200 like I do with the F4 here, and you can do without the 150 to 200 part of this lens, you could essentially use this lens to replace multiple lenses, at least two. Tie this together with a 1635, and that could be everything you need in your bag. You literally don't need anything else. Now that's all great on paper, but practically how does the lens handle? So let's jump right in with a video autofocus test. Transition speed is four, and subject sensitivity is also four. This lens is uh, pleasantly surprising me. At 150, can barely see the screen. Out the frame, back in the frame. How close can we get? Still focusing from what I can tell. Out the frame, back in the frame. It's slow. I wanted to come out for another autofocus test because yesterday it was snowing a little bit. It might not have been picked up on camera. But it was definitely snowing and I don't think it was doing as best as it could do. The snow was screwing with it. More so at the longer focal length. So let's zoom right in. All right, we're at 4,000 ISO. Okay, so now we're at 150 f2.8. How's it looking? Let's get out the frame. Let it focus on everything. Back in the frame. Did it get me? Can it track me if I run? Yeah, it's definitely performing better now. I think that snow was uh, screwing with it yesterday. Now, as you'll see from those tests there, at the wider end of things, it's great. Very impressed with how the autofocus performs. However, I found when I was zoomed all the way in, it became noticeably slower. Even when I was pretty far from the lens. It's not bad by any means, but I think it might inhibit your ability to rely on this lens for focusing without any of your input consistently. So if you're in the frame, not behind the camera, if that makes sense. Now, most of the time, you're probably gonna be on the other side of the camera actually filming, so you can just tap on the shutter to focus or tap on the screen to focus on whatever it is that you wanna focus on. But it's something to be aware of. Let's take another quick look at that again and just look for focus breathing. And you're gonna have to look really closely and really hard because it's extremely well controlled. There is next to none. Nice work, Tamron. Before we get into sharpness, a quick word from today's sponsor, which is Cuts. How much have you spent this year on t-shirts that you've just had to buy over and over again because once they've gone in the wash or the dryer two or three times, they lose their shape, they lose their fit, they lose their color, and then you just have to buy it again. That is one of the biggest reasons that you should honestly look at picking up some t-shirts or some hoodies from Cuts because this is premium menswear. And what I mean by that is you can throw it in the washer and the dryer multiple times and it's not going to lose its shape. It's still super soft to wear and it still looks nice as well. Also, how often do you iron your clothes? You don't have to iron these. They are wrinkle free. However that works, you don't have to pick up the iron anymore, ever again. Whether you want t-shirts, long sleeve t-shirts, hoodies, pants, hats, they have everything. There's a link down below. If you click on that link, you will get 15% off of everything in your order. Go ahead, treat yourself. It's Christmas coming up. I believe you still have time to get things if you wanna buy someone a, a gift, get them some nice clothes. Use the link down below. Now, when it comes down to sharpness, I understand that a lot of you want the sharpest possible lens, and sharpness is a measure of quality these days. Here's a few shots at 12 megapixels on the A7S III to give you an idea of what you're looking at in terms of sharpness. Now, I've got to say, I really wasn't expecting a lot with this lens. With these all-in-one zooms, you typically something has to suffer and normally is image quality and sharpness. But as you can see here, and I think you'll agree with me, it impressed me a lot more than I thought it would. Now, something really interesting Tamron has implemented is the ability to use something called Tamron Lens Utility. Now, on the side of this lens right here, there is a USB-C port, which is weather sealed. We'll get into that later, which means you can plug this in to your computer and obviously do your regular things like update firmware and that kind of thing. But you can also change features on the lens. You can use the buttons on the side here to basically 
assign it to pull focus a certain way and then when you push it, it it will perform that you can even change the focus ring on the front here to control aperture kind of like how the canon rf system works on the front there with the the click ring thing that they've got it's not gonna be for everyone but it's a super useful feature if you did want it to do that you can plug it in and change it. Now I do recommend checking out Dana's video which I'll link down below or up here somewhere that covers all that stuff in a huge amount of detail way more than I care to talk about because he's already done it in a really great way. Normally with these lenses that are the one and done do it all lenses you don't need to buy anything else something has to give and normally that's either your sharpness your image quality or more commonly when you zoom in the aperture changes to something that you just don't want to use like 5.6 you typically see that with kit lenses but that's why this is such a big deal because it ticks all the right boxes for having decent image quality as we've already seen now it is sharp and when you zoom in it does become slower but only from f2 to f2.8 at 35 it's f2 at 39 ish it goes up to an f2.2 at 59 f2.5 and then when you're from 80 mil and onwards it's at your full f2.8 really impressive that you can zoom all the way into 150 and still get a nice sharp image at f2.8 it's going to be good for low light at 150 as well there's not a lot of lenses out there that can do everything this does in this price category especially the go all the way down to 35 mil at their widest it just doesn't exist. All right, let's talk about lens design. Now, I haven't been the kindest to Tamron lenses before. With the original Tamron lenses, like the 28 to 75 when they came out a few years back, I harped on about them being very cheap feeling and plasticky and the autofocus just wasn't great. But again here, Tamron has hit it out the park with the 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8 di3 vxd lens for sony e-mount vxd standing for voice coil extreme torque drive so all we need to work on now Tamron is uh, is the naming structure for these lenses but design and build quality is completely on par with something like this 24 to 70 like when i hold this in my hand they feel very very similar so Tamron has clearly been doing their market research realizing what it is that people like out of a lens and putting it into this. It doesn't feel nearly as plasticky as any of the previous Tamron lenses, but even details like the manual focus, autofocus switch, all the buttons on here, everything just feels a lot more premium than it ever has before with a Tamron lens. Just comparing these side by side now actually with the buttons, I'd actually say that the buttons on the Tamron are nicer than the buttons on the Sigma 24 to 70. This feels like it really doesn't have any movement compared to this. This feels like a nice tactile clicky button. What about compared to the Sony? Oh, the Sony's still got it. Do you really care about buttons that much? I don't think so. The focus ring on here, it's smooth, it's beautiful. I'm actually gonna say this is probably one of the nicest focus rings I've ever turned. It just, it feels really good. And the zoom is firm, but like in a good way. You know, sometimes like on the Sigma there, it's, it's kind of loose now. Oh, it's making me not like my Sigma. I'm not buying this. Like, I have no need for this. I need wider than 35 personally, but that is loose compared to how this feels. That feels really good. It literally feels that they just wanted to put quality into every aspect of this design. And they did it. Something else to note here as well, compared to the Sigma, I actually like how the lock button on the, uh, on the side, just there, when you lock it, it actually locks it at 35. Like you, you physically can't force it to come out. I mean, maybe you can, I don't want to break this. It's just a loner, but I have to apply a lot of pressure there and it still doesn't do anything. Whereas the lock on the, uh, the Sigma here, if I put it into 24 and lock it, but yeah, it's locked, but you can push past that lock really easily. So also with the Sigma look, you see how it drops with the Tamron, it doesn't drop. So clearly they've done something a little better inside this compared to what uh, Sigma does. On the front element right there, that is actually a, you're gonna focus there camera? Come on, anytime. You got it, you got it. There we go, 82 mil, very common for filters. All of my filters are 82 mil. I'm actually surprised with everything this does that that wasn't quite a bit bigger. The lens is weather sealed without. There is a gasket on the back just there. I don't know if you can see that. And, uh, and on the USB-C port just there, that is in fact weather sealed. Don't ask me how, but it is. Some little magicians in there that just stop water. You shall not pass. Gandalf inside the lens, that's how they do it. It's a good sound. I talk about that in a lot of lens reviews. Don't know why. I like that one. Minimum focus distance on this at its widest at 35 mil is 13 inches. That is, that's that. Oh, that's quite big, isn't it? Whereas on the Sigma 24 to 70, as an example, at 24 mil, this is 18 centimeters. Why did I do centimeters and then inches? 18 centimeters is seven inches. That is a lot more what I would 
consider to be average. That's what she said. All right, here's a heavy one. Full pun intended. The Tamron 35 to 150 comes in at an astonishing 1165 grams. This is a heavy lens. I always thought my Sigma 24 to 70 was heavy. This is 835 grams. The Sony 70 to 200 f4 is 840 grams. The Sony 24 to 105 is 663 grams. This is nearly double that. And that is this lens's biggest weakness. It does a lot, but it is very heavy. I can balance a 24 to 105 on a gimbal, no problem. And that's a heavy setup for a day. This might balance on some gimbals. It's gonna be a challenge, but it might be way too much for you within a couple of hours. If you were traveling and wanted one lens so you don't have to bring anything else with you, I can quickly see this becoming cumbersome because it is big, like by comparison, that's 2470. That's the 7200. It's big and it's heavy. It's one of the very first things that I noticed when I had this attached to my A7S III uh, when I had on a neck strap around my neck and was out taking some photos. Weight is a good indication of quality, but this might be a bit much for some people. So depending on what you shoot, you gotta factor this increased weight into that equation and it might only be something you realize after you get this on a body and start using it. Price-wise, this comes in at $18.99, which people are going to say is too expensive, but I kind of believe for what this does with the results that it achieves, I really don't think it is. I think you're actually getting a bargain. This can easily replace multiple lenses. And I mean, I'm not going to, but I can see there are people out there that will be doing that with this lens. So who's this lens for? Well, if it's not already obvious, I would say this is for those people seeking one lens to do everything. This is the closest that we've ever come to a lens that will do nearly everything. Anybody looking for that is gonna love this lens, both hobbyist, prosumer, professional. It's one of the few instances where a product looks good on paper and it is actually good in real life too. Nice work, Tamron. Thanks for sending it through to me. It's been a complete joy to test out and use. I've got one more video coming with this lens, which will probably be out in like two, maybe three weeks. And uh, it's a one lens film that I've shot with this. If you're familiar with what those are, otherwise I'll link one up here. And that will do. I will see you in the next one. Take care.